Hi, my name is Johan Valk. This is a quick video showing how you can use rules to manipulate orders in uh, Drupal Commerce. In this case, I'm using rules and user points uh, to make sure that uh, users cannot uh, add uh, products to the cart if they don't have enough points for it. This is a question I got from from uh, uh, well, one of my listeners, or I guess. Uh, and he uh, has some something like this. He has a point limit set on products. This is uh, these are three products uh, using Drupal Commerce. Uh, point limit saying that if you don't have ten points, you cannot add this uh, first product to your cart. Twenty points is the limit for the second one, and this third one don't have any point limits at all. And I'm using now. I can just show you what this looks like. So here's my shopping cart. I'm reloading the page. It's empty. And I'm adding my first product, the first product to the cart, and it reacts as usual. First, uh, first product added to your cart, and then it says, "Sorry, the product first product requires ten uh, points. You should probably say here to be placed in the cart. In the cart, it has been removed, and we can see here if I reload, I don't have anything in my cart, but I can add this product three because." I have enough points for that. Let's reload. I think I have two points or something. Let's have a look at that as well. Points for root. I have two points. Very nice. Okay, and the question is how does this work? Um, it's magic. Uh, it's not really magic. Um, the modules I'm using, user points, user points rules integration. This was recently added, uh, incorporated in user points, uh, I think. Um, rules and rules UI and then standard commerce stuff. Commerce with products and orders and checkout, I don't know, cart and things. And the views module to be able to display stuff. Um, okay, first thing I did was that I went into the, uh, the rules interface and the reaction rules. That's here. And I added a new reaction rule. I called it well, remove unallowed products, which is a duplicate I'm going to show you soon. After adding a product to the cart, this is probably stupid. I should have done this before adding, I guess, before adding a... Uh, well, you could try this yourself, uh, doing this before, so then, then you'll probably not get duplicate messages, but we'll see. Uh, and then I try to compare the... Um, uh, point limit on the product with the points that the user has and then I realized that the rules integration for user points is kind of old-fashioned. You need an action to load the, the number of points of a user which means you have to do this the old-fashioned way like in Drupal 6 which means I had to create a rule set, a component that is a rule set that first loads the uh, points from the user and then makes a comparison with his points against the uh, uh, the point limit on the product. So uh, I made a rule set. We're going to have a look at that soon. And then I'm calling this rule set as an action. If I open this up, I call this uh, remove unloved products as well, which is kind of a bad because that was the name of the reaction rule as well. But never mind. I send three pieces of data into this rule set. One is the commerce product, one is the commerce order, and one is the line item. And the line item is the representation of the, the product in this order. Okay, Whew. so let's hear. Here are the rules components and here is my rule set called remove unallowed products. I open this one up and we can see here, this is very important when you deal with components in rules. We have parameters, incoming data, uh, arguments or whatever you want to call them, to this um, rule set. Three of them, it's the product, it's a product, it's an order, and it's a line item. And these are the same ones we're sending in here as data. That, that's why they appear here when I configure the reaction rule. Okay, so we have these three. And in this rule set, then, I have two rules. The first one loads the user points. We have a look at this. Uh, there's uh, one simple action. I load points of a user. Um, and... I choose the uh, owner of the order to load uh, points from. Uh, the general points, you m might have some other uh, user points, I don't know. 
let's call it user points instead of just points. This is the label of the, uh, the points that I load and I have a machine name for it as well. Save. And that's it for this rule. Then this finishes and this rule kicks in. Now we have one more variable to work with and that's great. I'm using this here in the data comparison. I have two conditions. We're going to look at the first one soon. But first the data comparison here. I'm checking that the product field required points that are these numbers here. If they are greater than the points that we just loaded, then something will happen because then this will be true and things happen down here. But in order to use this field, oh, in order to have this field show up at all, you need to first have this entity has field condition because rules doesn't assume that the entity uh, it's handling has fields, uh, has any fields. So you need to check this first, check that the product uh, has the field, field required points, and then this field will show up in rules and you can manipulate it and work with it. Okay, if that's the case, then do two things. I'm showing a message on the site uh, saying, sorry, the product, product title requires this many points to be placed in the cart. It has been removed. Uh, I would like to say here how many points you have. You have like 12 points, you need 20 points. That could be kind of nice. Uh, but there are no replacement patterns for integers, integer uh, variables in rules. And that's kind of a shame. And if you make a patch to change that, please submit it to rules because I know a lot of people would appreciate that. Uh, but this is an example right now just to how, how to get it work. So this is starting point. Okay, showing a message. Da, 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 and then removing the uh, actual line item. And that's kind of tricky. Um, uh, you have to use the action called remove an item from a list. Um, so, and then when you... Let's actually remove this action I'm gonna add it and you can see how I did so I add an action here and there are a number of actions I can do that are commerce stuff but I actually only need this remove an item from a list rules has a very generic way of working with data and this is one of them uh, in the order um, there is a list of line items a multiple value thing that contains line items this is a list I want to remove something from continue. What do I want to remove? I want to remove the line item that was sent into this, well that, that's being added right now and that's being sent as a parameter to this rule set and that's it. Um, yeah and there we are. Uh, let's uh, check this out again. Uh, add to cart, first product added to your cart and then removed so this, this um, rule runs when the uh, product has been added. Uh, that might be a mistake, as I said, but, but you can experiment with that. Let's see that then that the product number one is not added. That's good. Let's add some points to me. Let's edit this point transaction. And let's have 15 points instead. Save. Okay, now I have 15 points, that's kind of nice. Now I'm gonna buy first product and everything is fine. I should have product one added to my cart. Yes, that's nice. And if I've removed all the products in, in rules instead of just uh, uh, one line item, I would empty the entire cart, with, which is kind of bad. I should not be able to add product two to my cart. No, it has been removed. Let's reload. Yes. Okay. So this kind of works. That's kind of nice. It also works apparently if you have empty here as required points. You don't need to enter a zero or something. Something. And uh, yeah, that's it. Um, I hope this kind of makes sense. Uh, if not, I could try to make a video when I set up this uh, rules thingy from start to end and you can try to follow. But uh, hopefully this is enough. Yeah. Good luck, have fun, and goodbye.